Welcome back to Orange Blossom Healing, the channel where I am excited to help you feel better with diet and lifestyle. Today we are going to make a healthy Massaman curry and we're going to learn all about the week before your period. So stick around if you want to learn about how to manage your hormones from days 20 to day 28 or 30. Let's go. Do you ever feel irritable or bloated or kind of moody the week before your period? Maybe you have what seems like an unreasonable craving for chips and crisps or chocolate. That is actually totally normal. Your body needs the minerals provided by those kinds of foods. And that's what we're going to learn about today. With food and lifestyle, we can actually help our hormones to stay more balanced and not suffer symptoms like those. So the first thing I'm going to do is caramelize some onions. So I have chopped a couple of onions, white onions here, and I am just going to use coconut oil to caramelize those in the pan for about 10 minutes. Usually in Massaman curry they use peanuts, but today I'm gonna to use cashews. So I'm just going to put some of those into this tray to, to roast them. These are raw cashew pieces because they're cheaper than buying them whole. And I'm just going to fill my tray and put some into the curry and some on the top for after. And the reason that I want to use cashews is that apart from the fact that they are a brilliant source of protein, they're really rich in copper, which is something we need for healthy brain development, for immunity and energy production. They are also rich in manganese and magnesium, which is one of the minerals that our body craves this week before our period. So I'm gonna put those into roast for about 10 minutes whilst I'm caramelizing my onion. So with my onion, I am just looking for transparency and the beginning of it turning golden brown in order for it to be ready. I've got it on a medium heat. An onion is a brilliant detoxer, so it's a great one to include in any meal that you can as a base. I also have my rice soaking. So whilst I'm doing the main cooking of the curry, I'm just gonna let that soak before I put it on to boil later. Whilst I'm waiting for my cashews to be ready, I am going to make the paste, which is really the core of this Massaman curry and full of healing properties. Just wait till you see what's in it. So I have a couple of tablespoons of grated ginger. I have two garlic cloves. I have one fresh chili, which I chopped up already. I have one stalk of lemongrass. I'm also adding half a teaspoon of black peppercorns. So these guys have some really unusual benefits like helping with swallowing post stroke and studies that have shown that uh, pepper can actually help seniors to stand up when they have difficulties. But it also helps with more mainstream problems that lots of people suffer from like high blood pressure and it kickstarts your digestion. It can also help to ease arthritis and even fight cancer. So I try to include black pepper as often as possible. Half a teaspoon of turmeric is going in. Turmeric is one of nature's most incredible healers. So it really reduces inflammation throughout the body and helps fight some of those big bad diseases that we all know people who are suffering with. And I try to include it in, in as many of my meals as possible. It's one of the most widely studied spices. So really good science behind its benefits. One teaspoon of ground coriander leaf is going in. That's also awesome for your digestion and for inflammatory skin issues. So rashes, psoriasis, eczema, anything like that. Coriander is a great herb to be including in your diet. I'm adding a teaspoon of cumin and just a pinch of cinnamon, which is incredible for lowering blood sugar and reducing risk factors for pre-diabetes. So cinnamon is an excellent one to be including if you are worried about your insulin sensitivity. I'm throwing in a couple of cloves and two teaspoons or one tablespoon of coconut sugar. Most recipes use palm sugar, but I prefer to use coconut. So we're also adding one tablespoon of coconut oil. Coconut in all its forms is an incredible source of energy for our brains because it contains MCTs, which are medium chain triglycerides. These are, if you think about uh, energy in long chains and short chains, medium chain triglycerides are very accessible to our brain. So that they can be used as ketones for energy immediately upon consumption, which is great for people struggling with Alzheimer's um, as well as for general energy levels. 
And they're also packed with good fats, which are really important for our hormone building. So this paste is what is going to give your masa man that real authentic flavor and all of those healing properties. So you can see that my onion has started to brown and caramelize and I'm going to add in some turkey strips. So I'm using turkey because it's an awesome alternative to chicken, which is what we maybe more commonly use and chicken would be fine in this dish. But turkey, apart from being great for Thanksgiving, is full of B vitamins. So it contains loads of niacin and B6 and B12. And these are things that help us to build DNA. They help with amino acid formation and they help us with neurotransmitters that we need to create. So they're just an awesome way of getting some extra B vitamins into our diet. And I'm just gonna brown those for a couple of minutes um, in the coconut oil with the onion until they look not so raw. And whilst I do that, I'm gonna start talking to you about this part of our cycle. So in a previous video, we talked about day one to 10 and the way that estrogen is building during these days and we have to eat lots of protein, a ketobiotic diet, and we're more resilient to stress. Then we also talked about in another video, day 11 to 15, which is the period of ovulation. And in this time we are at our best, we also need a ketobiotic diet with a little bit of carb and we're keeping stress low and focusing on detoxing. So first of all, I want to address that little gap in the middle. So day 16 to 19 is really hormonally a repeat of day one to 10. So coming out of ovulation, our hormones crash. So we have low hormones, we have low testosterone, in fact that leaves, we have low estrogen and we have low progesterone. So again, we are resilient to stress, we're able to fast, we're able to stay up a little bit later and we need to eat ketobiotic. So we don't want carbs in our diet from day 16 to 19. So if you're in those days, do check out the video about day one to 10 because all of the information is relevant. Once we hit day 20 and we start producing progesterone, then this is a completely different hormone. So we need to treat her completely differently. So in the week before our period, we mentioned at the beginning, we might start to feel heightened irritability, uh, mood swings, crave things like chips and crisps and chocolate. That is because for progesterone to build, our body requires glucose. So glucose is sugar and we need that from nature's carbs. So from carbohydrates like potatoes, sweet potatoes, which we're gonna use in our curry today, um, squashes, butternut squashes, pumpkins, all of those beautiful vegetables which are around at this time of year in October. And also our tropical fruit, so our pineapple and papaya, banana are full of progesterone building glucose, so carbohydrates. We don't want to be eating pizza and pasta and processed biscuits. That's not the kind of carb that we need. That will interfere with severe glucose spikes and make us feel not so great afterwards. But what we do want to do is build in some glucose. So that's what we're focusing on today and also fat. You will have heard me talk in each video about the importance of fat and fat is really key for building all of our hormones. So we wanna be including the coconut and the coconut oil, olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, um, avocado. These are great sources of fat. Butter, ideally from unpasteurized milk from grass-fed cows is an excellent source of fat. Full fat milk or coconut milk if you want to have an alternative. There are loads of places you can get your good fat. So my turkey is just starting to cook on one side and I'm going to turn it over. And whilst we are in this progesterone building phase, which I think is the most underrated and criminally ignored phase of our cycle, it's something that all young girls should know and learn at school and it's something that all of us adult female should know. Because really in that week from day 20 to day 28 or 30 or 32, whenever your period comes, we really need to slow down. So we are not resistant to stress in this period, okay? So we don't want to be having difficult conversations. We don't want to be working long hours. We must prioritize sleep. Sleep is one of the most healing states that we can be in. And so we must go to bed at a decent time and get up at a decent time, allowing our body the amount of hours that it needs to really heal and repair. 
We don't want to fast during this week at all. Fasting, whilst being a fantastic regenerative and healing tool, it is a stressor on the body. And so during this week, we're avoiding fasting, we're avoiding cold plunges, we're avoiding saunas, we're avoiding anything that makes our heart rate rise. If you are a cardio exerciser or a runner, you just wanna take it down so that you're not super sweaty at the end of your workouts. If you do weights, you wanna take the weight down. If you're used to a 10 kilo, try using a five kilo. We don't want the body to feel stressed because cortisol comes in and takes away DHEA, which is one of the main compounds that builds progesterone. And if cortisol comes in, our body goes into fight or flight, and that means that it is prioritizing survival. If the body prioritizes survival, everything else gets set aside. Certainly your sex hormones and their building gets set aside. So all of your DHEA will go to cortisol and none will be left for progesterone to build. If this is happening to you, you might see things like your period not coming, so skipped periods. You might see spotting, where your period is not properly coming through. You might see uh, increased anxiety, increased palpitations, hair loss, increased mood swings and irritability. These are all signs that your progesterone is not building properly. And they are signs that you need to slow down. So society at the moment gives us a badge of honor for being a rushing woman. There's an awesome book called The Rushing Woman Syndrome, which I recommend you read if you feel that you are in that category. That's not how we need to behave at this time of the month. We really need to find a way to reduce our responsibilities or reduce the stress of our responsibilities. So if you know that you have a lot of work to do this month, can you plan it in the first three weeks and leave yourself that week a little bit calmer? Can you take a couple of less meetings? And certainly, can you feed your body the right foods to help that progesterone build? So now that my turkey is looking a little bit less raw, and I've got rid of the pink on all sides, I'm going to add in that gorgeous paste that we made with all of those healing herbs and spices. I really don't want this paste to burn because as I've mentioned before, when we burn our food, we don't get as many of its healing properties because the enzymes start to die off among other things. So I'm turning the heat right down and I'm just going to cook that paste and coat all of the turkey in it just for a couple of minutes. So at this point, I am just going to add in a couple of lime leaves. I've actually added in three there. I've got four cardamom pods, and cardamom has been widely studied, showing that it has incredible benefits for the respiratory system. So if you struggle with asthma, that's a really cool one to check out. And I'm also adding in one star anise, which just adds this beautiful flavor and is an awesome fighter of the flu. So great at this time of year. I've got one uh, can of organic coconut milk. So that's 400 mils and I'm gonna add that in now as well to simmer slowly. I'm adding a tablespoon of fish sauce, which again, just gives that really authentic Thai flavor. And I've also got about 100 ml of a chicken broth that I made and froze, and I had it ready to go in my freezer. If you want to check out how to make chicken broth, I have a super easy reel on that. And that again, adds this real depth of flavor to the curry. So I'm gonna leave all of those beautiful ingredients now to simmer for about 20 minutes. And in the meantime, I am going to cook my rice. So today I chose a mix of brown rice and uh, wild rice. And the reason that I chose these is that wild rice has a superior nutritive uh, density. So it is a better rice, but it is so expensive. So I like to buy the brown rice, wild rice mix just because it's more realistic for the budget and brown rice is a great option also. So I have my mix of wild rice and brown rice boiling over there. I've just been simmering the curry for around 20 minutes now. So I'm going to add in my roasted cashews, some of about half of them, which you can see have browned in the oven beautifully. So I'm just going to add those in and stir them. So cashews contain a lot of magnesium and that is one of the minerals that our body craves during this time before our period. That's why we crave dark chocolate, which also contains a ton of magnesium. So as long as you're eating a dark chocolate above 70% or a raw chocolate, you don't need to feel bad about that. This is the time when your body needs those minerals and it's the perfect time to eat them. 
I'm also adding in two sweet potatoes, which I peeled and diced before. And sweet potatoes are one of my absolute favorite vegetables. Not only are they really high in fiber, both soluble and insoluble fiber, but they also contain over 200% the recommended daily intake of vitamin A. So they actually contain beta carotene, which converts to vitamin A in your body. And that is not only fantastic for your eyesight and your eye health generally, but it's also really important for immunity, which again is important at this time of year. And sweet potato is one that we want to be including in the week before our period because it's, it's high in carbohydrates. So that glucose from nature that we need to help us build progesterone, the perfect addition to our Massaman curry. If you don't have sweet potato, then normal potato, white potato would do just fine here too. And there is also a purple variety, um, which is native to Japan, that has some fantastic healing properties as well. So you can play around with potato. And if you're getting a veg box and you have lots of squash or uh, pumpkin, those would work really well too and give you many of the same benefits to this curry. So I'm going to stir that in and just leave that to simmer for another 20 minutes or so until my sweet potato has softened, ready to eat. My brown rice and wild rice mix has cooked and is ready to go. And I'm just gonna mix in, before I add my curry to it, which is just finishing simmering, I'm going to add a mix of coriander and Thai basil, both of which are really rich in antioxidants. Coriander is wonderful for the digestion. Thai basil is wonderful for regulating blood sugar. So again, during the, your whole cycle, what you're aiming to do in order to be insulin sensitive is, is regulate your blood sugar and make sure it's stable. So any foods that do that are great to include regularly. And both of these flavors complement the Southeast Asian flavors of this dish. So I'm just going to rip those up. Herbs always release more flavor when we rip them and then mix them into the rice. And I'm gonna add a little bit of lime as well. Lime is optional, um, but I'm just gonna add, I think it always complements these kinds of dishes, especially if you've included a lot of chili. And then we have our rice perfect, ready for the curry to add. With a little sprinkle of the roasted cashew nuts on top to give it a little bit of extra crunch. And there you have it, a progesterone building, delicious, nutritious plate of Massaman curry. So I hope that helps and I hope that you enjoy that dish and I will see you next time. Take care, bye.